All right, I'm Famous Nubrack. What's up, guys? We are watching Why We Should Not Look for Aliens. Let's fucking see what this is. The universe is incredibly big and seems full of potential for life with billions of habitable planets. If an advanced civilization had the technology to travel between the stars at just 0.1% of the speed of light, it could colonize our galaxy in roughly 100 million years. Wow. Which That's is it? not that long given the billions of years the Milky Way has existed. So, in principle, any spacefaring civilization should be able to spread rapidly over huge sectors of the galaxy. And okay. yet, we see nothing, hear nothing. The universe seems empty, devoid of others. Creepy. This is the Fermi Paradox, which we've discussed in more detail in other videos. Confronted with the seemingly empty universe, humanity faces a dilemma. We desperately want to know if we are alone in the Milky Way. We want to call out and reveal ourselves to anyone watching. Wait, you guys see that? See, this looks like a flat Earth. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but that could be the last thing we ever do. Because maybe the universe is not empty. Maybe it's full of civilizations, but they are hiding from each other. Maybe the civilizations that attracted attention in the past were wiped away by invisible arrows. This is the Dark Forest solution to the Fermi Paradox. The Dark Forest? What am I watching, bro? What is this? The Way of Life. The hunter awakes in his hiding place and carefully listens for suspicious noises from the thick undergrowth before he gets up. This animal planet? Another night has passed without incident. The forest is dark and full of fog. He considers calling out to others to end his loneliness, but stops himself at the last moment. What if they are like him? Oh shit. All living things seek to survive, secure resources, and multiply. Their greatest obstacle are other living things that share the same objective. Competition between species favored the survival of beings with advantageous traits. Our ancestors were inventive, competitive, expansionist, and greedy for resources, True. which led them to winning the competition for our planet. Today, most other animals are so utterly at our mercy that we wipe out about a dozen species a day. Yeah, fuck just everything as but an humans. Unintentional byproduct of how we like to run things. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But humans are more than individuals. From us, cultures emerge that also compete with each other. Competitive and expansionary cultures spread faster yeah, and fuck further humans too, and to be honest. with, subdue or destroy others. If we look at our history, it becomes clear we are dangerous. Yeah, look at that. We have Not games like that. Others, Clash of Clans to ourselves. Our human nature has driven us to take over every corner of our planet, and soon we will look to the stars, both to expand our domain and ensure access to ever more resources. And yeah, that's kind of wild. We might stumble upon others trying to do the same thing. Oh shit! It's likely that the competition of life also takes place on faraway planets, so it's logical to assume that an alien civilization that came to dominate their planet would be in some regards similar to us. Wow. But if they're similar to us, they too may be dangerous. Wow. Didn't think about that one. The implication. As the hunter sneaks through the dark forest all alone, he knows that there might be others like him. He can't know their intentions, if they are aggressive or not. The hunter knows he would kill to ensure his own survival, so he has to assume that they would too. And it might be that if he stumbles upon another hunter, the one that shoots first survives. None of this means that conflict is unavoidable. So far, the progress of the modern world seems to have made us more peaceful, not more violent. Okay, all right, now we know this video is fake. We're, we're, we're violent. Humans are violent. Let's, let's just say that. We're, we're, we fight with each other. Yeah, this is fake news. Maybe this is true for other civilizations too, that eventually progress means less conflict, not more. Different alien civilizations also should vary from the mild and peaceful to the malevolent and militaristic. Wow. Can you imagine we just find military aliens?
and like like by us finding them we reveal our hiding spot in the universe and we get wiped out because we went searching for them that's kind of funny the existential problem we're facing is that when we meet others between the stars we have no way of telling who is peaceful or aggressive and what their true intentions are similarly they might not understand or trust our intentions even if we tell them that we are peaceful on top of that if we did discover another civilization and they discovered us the light years between us would mean years of communication delay true both sides would be in a state of uncertainty wondering if the wisest move is to just attack because there's another serious issue yeah what if there's like people aliens watching us right now wondering like hey are we are they gonna evolve in a few light years and fucking find us that's wild technological explosions and the first strike advantage we don't know where the limits of technology are but we do know how much technological progress matters in war a few hundred or thousand years can turn conflict with uncertain results oh, into shit. a one-sided massacre oh, caesar's shit. legions would stand no chance against napoleon's army with their cannons and muskets which would be eradicated by artillery from the first world war wow. which would not stand a chance against today's drones and guided missiles so the power level of different civilizations may vary massively and even if not between the time it takes us to detect another civilization and us saying hi we might already be hopelessly behind on the tech tree wow which is bad enough but the nature of interstellar conflict makes this worse if your opponent is light years away sending an invasion fleet takes so long that by the time it arrives it might be hopelessly obsolete that's crazy so war between civilizations might be just about eliminating the other to remove an existential threat to yourself someone else who might be so scared of you that they attack the first chance they get in this environment the only way to guarantee a win is to strike with such force and speed that the target has no chance of survival or time to counterattack or escape to seek revenge later <clears throat> that's creepy it's like when you go to the like the tribes in africa don't fire spears at you, even though, like, you're just trying to, like, help or, like, do research or be friendly, right? <laughs> Same with these aliens, dude. Like, they're probably just about, they're just gonna wipe us out. Because they're like, yeah, we don't want them to, to evolve. The stakes are the highest possible, with no room for error. If we assume that the majority of civilizations live on planets, that leaves them pretty vulnerable. All you need to do is throw something massive at a planet to make it uninhabitable. So the ultimate interplanetary annihilation weapon is probably something like a relativistic kill vehicle. A uh, and this is actually kind of wild because if you think about it, if we were, so, so we were either alone in this universe or we're not, right? <clears throat> I want to assume most people think we're not alone in the universe. So there's other things out in the universe. Now, the question is, are we the smartest in the universe or not? Because if we are the smartest, that's kind of fucking scary, right? Because then it's like a waiting game for something else to become smarter than us. And then if there are smarter things out there than us, then we're, we're, we're just fucked. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and humans are pretty dumb too. Like, let's be honest. Like, humans are actually pretty dumb. A missile shot at a planet at a significant fraction of the speed of light. For example, a missile the size of a person going 95% the speed of light has as much energy as all nuclear bombs on Earth. What? If you shot a few dozen at the civilization you wanted to wipe out, success would be fairly certain, even a single hit would suffice. This That's is not wild. that absurd of an idea. A civilization only slightly above us on the Kardashev scale would have enough energy to send multiple strikes against every planet it suspects. On the, on the fucking what scale? What the fu- oh, on the Karda- what the hell is that? Kardashev scale? Well, so where are we? We're 1 or we're we point 0.7? I think we're point 0.7. So civilization that's ahead of us in the technology scale, right? Scale would have enough energy to send multiple strikes against every planet it suspects of harboring life. What makes these weapons so sinister is how much they favor a first strike, since they would be so fast 
that it might be impossible to protect yourself effectively against them once they're launched. Wow. Conflict between civilizations may not be lengthy affairs, but rapid winner-takes-all situations, where the first one to shoot wins. This makes any civilization an existential threat to any other. And if every civilization is an existential threat to every other, there may be only two kinds of civilizations out there. Quiet ones and dead ones. Wow. So what should we do? Should we worry? It's unlikely that anybody has noticed humanity yet. The radio signals we've transmitted in the last 100 years traveled a relatively tiny distance and have long decayed into unreadable noise. At our technological stage, if we don't actively try to get noticed, and if nobody specifically looks at our pretty unremarkable solar system, we'll stay hidden. But one day we will venture into space in a serious way and need to consider these kinds of questions again. We don't know if there are others or if we are going through the forest alone, but we have no way of knowing for sure. For the time being, it seems the best we can do is to carefully listen. And even if we see others step into a clearing and make themselves known, we should not reply right away, but carefully watch them from the undergrowth. Perhaps we are also thinking about this all wrong by allowing our primitive brain that evolved in the context of the gruesome competition of life to conjure fears of predatory aliens all around us. Maybe the fact that we are looking at the universe like this is a sign that we are not grown up yet as a species. Hell no. There could be a friendly, welcoming community of alien civilizations waiting to hear from us when we are ready. As for Bro, can you just imagine we show we find some aliens are like, yeah, we have a console of fucking space species all over. You want to join our console? Can you just fucking imagine? There, there is no fucking way, bro. There, there's no, like, bro. Think about it. Like, what if humans actually found out there's life somewhere else? Like, like literal life, like beings. Yeah, America would be like, I want their oil. Like, yeah, yeah, we'll be friendly, but just give us all your resources. For now, the good news is there is actually little we need to do. We just need to be thoughtful about the signals we send out into the galaxy. We need to watch the sky and learn more about our galaxy, our forest. Because whatever- Are they calling the galaxy a forest? I mean, it's kind of like a forest. Can you imagine if, like, some guy sending out radio waves is, like, sending, like, enemies the location? And, like, aliens find us and they're like, ooh, this is a good, like, food source. And then they start harvesting humans because some guy sent a radio out into space. That'd be fucking wild, but, like, that's kind of creepy to think about. Whatever the nature of our forest is, full of dangers or friends, or nobody at all, only careful observation can tell. So, let's do that. At last, the hunter reaches a clearing and finds a comfortable position. Okay. Slowly, the sun melts the fog away. Lost in thought, he admires the vegetation until suddenly he is eye to eye with another hunter. Oh, shit. Frozen in terror, just like himself. His mind is racing, considering all the different options. The hunter takes a deep breath and makes a decision. Maybe the only way out of the dark forest is to step into the clearing together. Yeah, that's not going to happen. And with this hopeful picture, we say goodbye to the year 12,021 of the human era. It was a wild year to say the least, still much more fun than 12,020. Kortskazat had its most successful month ever and published a book. We tried a lot of new techniques and really got into Blender and Cinema 4D, hiding more and more 3D in our videos. We have so many ideas for next year and big and ambitious plans that we can't wait to share with you. And all of this was and is possible because of your direct support. Thank you so much. Kurzgesagt only works because of you. So in tune with the end of the year, we've designed a few products that will help you to visualize your place in the universe. Wow. Our very shiny The Night Sky poster shows you the little piece of space we can see from Earth with our own eyes. That's kind of cool. travel further out with our stellar zoom collection that depicts our home in space from an increasing distance. 
or dream with our space-themed notebooks, scenic posters, and pens. Those are pretty cool. We design and produce every single product with great care. Getting something from our shop is the best way to support Kotskazak. We hope you have a wonderful end of the year and that 2022 is more fun and less exciting than the last two years. Thank you for watching. They're probably going to watch this video in 2022 and be like, wow. Like, what if, what if, like, I, I think we should, we, I think we should discover an alien. I think we should. That's a wild video. Why we should not look for aliens. I mean, it's hidden right there.